If you're a regular of this channel, you'll know that I often skip anything that could be considered optional when it comes to growing just because I like to keep it simple and save on costs. And one of the things I've always avoided is the use of mineral-free water. So basically reverse osmosis or distilled water. And honestly, with my city's tap water, I've always been able to get away with it. However, with the number of emails I get each time I post a hydroponic grow guide from people that have terrible luck with their city water supply causing issues I've never seen before, I figured it was about time to try and do it the right way. So basically, the idea behind filtered water is that we're taking readily available tap water that has a bunch of minerals and stuff in it, and then removing as much of the stuff as possible so that we start with a clean slate, allowing us to fine tune exactly what the plant uptakes. This is typically done either through a water distiller, which boils the water and captures the vapors, or by running the water through a bunch of filters. And most people go with the filter route since it's way cheaper to do so with the most common system used being a four-part reverse osmosis deionized water system or uh, RODI system. Note that this is the first time I've worked with something like this. So if I get something wrong with how this works, let me know. But basically I put in a pressurized water source here, which then goes through four types of filters. A sediment filter, which removes large particles from the water. A carbon filter, which removes chemicals and odors. A reverse osmosis membrane, which removes heavy metals. And a deionization filter, which removes any remaining minerals and salts. There's also five, six, and seven stage filters available, which adds things like an additional carbon filter, UV sterilization, and pH adjustments to the water. But for the most part, it appears that for hydroponic applications, a four stage is good enough. And given that I'm doing this with a garden hose, I learned two things pretty quickly. One, this system creates a good amount of discard water. The reverse osmosis membrane outputs RO water on one end and discarded wastewater on the other and it looks like it creates over two gallons of discarded water for each gallon of filtered water. This discarded water is also higher in minerals and impurities than regular tap water, since it's basically tap water plus all the stuff that was originally in the RO water. So I don't think it can be used for much and is typically sent down the drain. But since a gallon of tap water is basically free here, and a gallon of distilled water at the store is around a dollar, this is still the most economical option by far long term. The other thing I learned is that doing this manually is not a great idea, especially when working with a large hydroponic system. This is rated to produce 75 gallons per day, so filling out a 15 gallon storage tote took a couple of hours to do. I can connect this with the float valve to automate the system, which is what I eventually plan on doing, but this will require a lot more prep work in my grow space to set up. So for now, I'll mostly be using this to refill my humidifier for another project I've been working on. Overall though, this is well worth the price if you have a consistent need for filtered water. Even with just a humidifier, if I'm using a gallon of clean water a day, this will eventually pay for itself, given that I can produce thousands of gallons of clean water before the filters need to be replaced. And looking back, I typically use a good amount of distilled water for my projects, from producing ethanol alcohol that can naturally provide CO2 to your grow space, to making my own colloidal silver to create feminized seeds with. So yeah, I still got to figure out how to automate my water storage tank to fully take advantage of this. But even before then, it's nice to have a consistent source of filtered water anytime I need it. And that's it. 